All right, on 100 miles in the Fresh Foam Moor with all that Fresh Foam X midsole. How's it been? 100 miles. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. They point my shoe at you. Today we're going to talk about the 100 mile review of the Fresh Foam Moor by New Balance. Big New Balance, that's not Nike. Anyway, uh, we did a initial review of this shoe and uh, had some thoughts on that. Check out that video. And uh, if you are following the channel, you know that uh, I ran a 50 mile run in these shoes pretty much straight out of the box brand new so the first 50 miles of my 100 miles of running was in one run so it's pretty easy to get to 100 miles after that anyway uh yeah i got like, a few things to say about this shoe some good some not great uh, i do want to review the specifications of the shoe and the choices i made when i purchased this shoe so first of all uh let's start with the weight so 9.6 ounces yeah this thing is monstrous this is a big bulky just clown like shoe but it's only 9.6 ounces i'll leave the weight in grams below and men's size nine is about what i wear i started moving up to a nine and a half so and this is also a nine and a half as well so anyway that's kind of uh yeah it's real light for the big clunky shoe that this thing is. Anyway, it also has 34 millimeters of stack height in the back and 30 millimeters of stack height up front. So an offset, heel to toe offset of four millimeters. So it is like, for me, sweet spot. That's like Hoka does that kind of stuff. And a lot of other shoe companies are doing this lower stack height, or I'm sorry, offset. Uh, the stack height's monstrous, just like Hoka's. Um, but different than Hoka's, New Balance has a fantastic um, system where you can order a majority of their shoes in wide. So I chose because I like to have my toes be able to display and support my body better. I chose to get a wide. So these are double E wide and these are a half size bigger than I usually get. I'm usually a size nine and these are size nine and a half. So these are a bit long and a little bit wide and I like it that way, especially for a 50 mile run because I was getting ready to run 50 miles in these and I wanted to make sure that my foot would be able to expand and all that kind of stuff and not start causing me blistering and heat spots and that kind of thing during the run. So these are a little wide and a little long when it's fantastic, especially over 50 miles. Uh, okay, so um, a couple things I wanna talk about that are negative. One is a kind of a small issue, but it kind of got to be a pain. So I guess it's kind of a big issue. And that's in the upper. This upper is a nice uh, synthetic, obviously, uh, engineered mesh. And it is very breathable. I liked it in the cool weather. I could feel the cold air, keeping my feet nice and warm and uh, cool, sorry, and not letting them get too sweaty. But the issue that I encountered with the upper is the tongue. So the tongue is a semi-gusseted tongue, and it's hard to show in here, but the tongue, the, what they mean by semi-gusseted is the tongue is incorporated or integrated into the upper of the shoe in some way, not fully. That's not like a, it's not like a booty here, but this tongue is attached to the upper other than right here. All tongues are attached here, but this one actually is attached on, on the medial and the lateral side of the shoe as well. So it is a semi-integrated uh, tongue or gusseted tongue they call it the problem i have is even though it's semi-gusseted and it's supposed to like because of that reason it's not supposed to travel much i find that the tongue kind of wants to slip over here like this and just to the side like that and it's not too painful but when i'm trying to lock down the shoe i do feel some binding and uh some pressure on the top of my foot especially towards the top here and I usually try, try to have the runner's knot up top, and you can do that. There's enough eyes in the top to do that. But during my long runs, especially that 50 miler, it started getting really painful. And I had to 
uh, loosen my shoe to the point that I wasn't getting a good lockdown on the heel because it was binding so much because the tongue was sliding over. Um, the tongue itself is fairly thick. It's not totally padded, but it's pretty thick and it should help with the from the laces binding you too much. But yeah, when it slides over, that's really kind of annoying. I don't like that. Um, also, I noticed that the top of here uh, is kind of buckling a little bit. And that could be because I got a shoe that's a little wider than I really need. But it got a little bit of puckering here because I'm tying things down too much. Uh, but then again, that could be my fault because I got a shoe that's a little bit wider than I really needed, probably. All right, so those are the little things. The, as far as uh, cushion, cushion has been there the whole time. No issue with that. I do want to iterate that this is the fresh foam more. So more doesn't mean more cushion because there's more stack height. It doesn't. In fact, it's probably less cushion. It's more protection. So you don't feel the road nearly as much. So I also have the New Balance uh, 1080 with the same midsole, the same Fresh Foam X midsole. And that shoe is way more cushioned than this shoe. However, I feel a lot more of the rocks and that kind of thing in the 1080 than I do here. Here, I feel nothing. It's if you don't want to feel the, the, the rocks and the cracks and all that kind of stuff when you're running, yeah, go with the more. It's not because it's more cushioned, it actually feels a little firm, but a lot more protection. Okay, so let's get to the big elephant in the room and the big problem that I have with this shoe. And it's only because it's a durability issue. It doesn't really affect the running per se, but it's this outsole. And it's only I only have just barely over 100 miles in this shoe. I'm not sure if you can see, but the outsole, especially this is the heel area, because I do heel strike occasionally, is worn. The forefoot area is these little hexagons are pretty much worn away. All the little tread is gone in them, and they are worn down and chewed up. And over 100 miles, that should not happen. Even with the New Balance 1080 that I have, it's not worn down nearly as much, and I have almost 100 miles on those shoes as well. And these shoes, these shoes were getting worn down like this after 50 miles. So it's just uh, kind of concerning a little bit that these will not have um, much durability just because the outsole is going to wear away and you lose the traction then. Not that these are trail shoes or anything, but even on, on uh, wet surfaces, that kind of thing, you, you want some kind of traction. And if you have no traction, then it's, it's no bueno. Uh, so that's that's my major issue with these shoes is the outsole is just wearing away. And for the price of these shoes, I think these are $160 new. Uh, now I think they're going to start coming down in price because I think the version 3 is coming out. These are version 2 of the Fresh Foam more. Um, so this, the price will be coming down. But for $160 shoe, I would want at least the shoe, the outsole to uh, stay intact. You would expect the midsole to break down before the outsole, but in this case, the outsole is destroyed and the midsole is just fine. I feel fine. I can run in the midsole, I think, for another few hundred miles and not have a problem, but there won't be any outsole left to run on. Um, I don't know what the difference is in the rubber between the Fresh Foam Moore and the New Balance 1080, but the 1080 outsole is doing a lot better than this. Uh, I can feel this is a lot softer material than the rubber in the 1080. Uh, from New Balance. Anyway, uh, all, all my impressions are good of the shoe. It does what, exactly what I want it to do. Um, it offers offers some good support. It doesn't have a lot of uh, give to it, so we like to try to do that little twist test. And uh, yeah, it's not dancing a whole lot. It's uh, As far as flexibility, it has some flexibility. Um, this is again, this has got 100 miles in it, so it's getting a little bit more flexible. It's got tons of protection, so you don't feel the road and all the rocks and crevices. It's not the softest, but it is still pretty soft. I think it's very soft, especially with the New Balance insole that's in here. There's a five millimeter insole in here that is mwah, very nice and soft as well. So, because um, I think I mentioned in some other videos that New Balance makes three different types of insoles for the shoes, and this is the thickest one they offer, this insole that comes with this shoe. Anyway, no problems with the heel at all. I have no problems in the 1080 with the heel, kind of feeling funky. This is a wonderful heel. Got plenty of support after 100 miles. It looks, the upper looks brand new. The midsole area looks brand new. There's no creasing of the insole, a little bit, barely a little bit. 
increasing of the midsole, but uh, considering we're looking at 30 millimeters of midsole, I'm not worried about it. It's the outsole that's the problem. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. This is a 100 mile review of the New Balance Fresh Foam More version 2. And uh, yeah, that's really all I gotta say about that. I'm gonna put some more miles on this for my long runs because I do like it. And I am figuring out how to deal with the tongue slippage issue. But uh, it's not a uh, it's not a killer for me at the point at this point. I just, I just like it. It works. Anyway, leave a big thumbs up on the video. Comment down below. What's your favorite long run shoe? Maybe I've asked this before, but I'll ask it again. And uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And until next time, peace.